Hey guys and welcome back to Schneids 15. Today we're going to be doing a 302 Ford winterization. Uh, and by winterization in this I'm not going to cover your oil change, your fogging, your fuel stabilization. Uh, by winterizing I'm going to be covering just uh, how to uh, drain the block and what I do. So we're going to start off. This is an inboard um, center mount engine. So I'm going to do it like it's in an IO, like uh, say a Mercury setup with an old 302 Ford. It's pretty well the same uh, same thing, but uh, this one is outfitted. It's a Shamrock. It's a keel drive system, but uh, the same procedure goes to everything else. So I'll, I'll cover the other basics. So if uh, you have a question that... Uh, something isn't right compared to yours just uh shoot me a comment and i'll try and uh, help you through it because every every boat is outfitted different pretty well so uh anyways we'll uh we'll get to it so first off we're going to start by disconnecting our hoses uh so we have each one going to our manifolds so this one here and this one goes to our exhaust manifolds uh and then we have one coming off of our thermostat housing down here down to our circulating pump and then uh, we have two right here on our uh, our uh, raw water pump. So we're gonna disconnect um, four, six of these, all of them together, and uh, pull them off, and then I'll get to showing you the next step. So now with all of our hoses disconnected, take your uh, thermostat hose and uh, throw it on top here, just like this. We can use that as a funnel to uh, put antifreeze in there and go through the engine. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but next off, we're going to go to our uh, plugs in our in our block. So on the front of our block, we're going to go below. Um, I did this on this inboard so I could show you. So on a Ford, your blocks aren't like a GM. They're not both in the center of your block plugs. They're in front. So if you come under here, you see it right there. So remove that and uh, some people go like that. I don't like that. I, uh, I pull them right out and uh, because there's always rust in there. So that's got a good flow. Um, I always just set them up in the manifold here and you won't lose them. So now with that being done and pulled out, uh, I always take a zip tie or something and shove it in here and poke that. For our next plug, it's on the port side, it's in the very back of the motor. I can't get to showing it from there, so we're going to show you from down here. So, I'll bring my camera in under here, pulling it back here. And see that brass plug right there? It's a 9 16th on this one, but anybody can outfit these. As you've seen, there was a tap on the other side, and this one has just a straight plug. So I'm going to get my 9 16 in there and uh, remove that plug. So this one here, I'm not going to bother poking because I can physically see that it's a very good, strong, healthy stream. It's not going to be locked up by rust. That's a good sign that this motor isn't rusty inside in the water jackets. So next off, on the back you'll either have plugs in the back of your manifold or you will have uh, taps. This one's taps. Uh, I don't prefer these because they can get bunged up with rust. But anyways, these ones seem to be working well. Um, so you open that up. You can see it's draining there. It's not the best flow, but uh, I'll get in there and poke that. Same with your starboard side. Get in there and uh, open that tap or plug and let that drain. As you can see, that one's barely flowing, so I'm gonna um, poke that with my plastic zip tie. Just cause I use a plastic zip tie cause it can bend around corners. Anyways, get that done um, and then wait until your uh, water has drained out of each manifold fully and out of each block fully. In the meantime, if you're doing this on uh, inboards, you're going to have your water intake coming through a through hull fitting. So this will be full of water, your strainer. So on the bottom here, there's a plug that you can pull out, which I will pull out right now. And there we go. So 
you can see the water straining out of there. They won't sit right full, most will drain, but there will be some in there. So let that drain out and uh, you can leave that plug out too. So that's another one just to make sure that's drained or it will crack and break. So uh, now we'll get to doing the antifreeze. So with my block now drained, I'm gonna take my plumbing antifreeze and go in the top hose off of my thermostat housing here and fill this up with antifreeze. So now we're gonna fill this up and we're gonna give it quite a bit. You need about a four liter jug. I have a bigger jug, but you don't need that. Um, and we're gonna let it fill in here until we physically can see pink coming out of each block plug hole. I'll show you in a second on the camera. So now, come under here, see a steady stream of pink coming out of there, that's good. Go to your other side, get under there, steady stream of antifreeze. So you know that that block has, um, the water has gone out and now it's just antifreeze coming out. So that's good, you know for sure there's no water left and it comes out nice and pink. If it doesn't come out nice and pink, it's diluted with water and there could be some in there still, but that's nice and pink. So same thing next, take your antifreeze, put up this hose here, it goes into your manifold and then it should come out this tap in the back. So we're gonna dump it into this manifold and this one will repeat it for both sides and make sure we got antifreeze coming out the back. Now with that dumped in there, come out the back here. So you can see it's nice and pink running out of there. That's what we want. Same with this side. I put an extra little bit in that side because it wasn't draining that well and I can't get that tap out of there. So it's gonna just trickle that out slowly. But we know there's no water in there now and it's all antifreeze. Okay, the last thing to do, this hose I have disconnected, it runs up to here and is down there. Um, that's your power steering cooler. So I'm gonna dump some in there just in case. See that's coming out pink, there we go. Now we know that whole line's done. Um, again, this isn't necessary, but it's just an extra precaution. Now, I'm gonna take it and dump it into here, and it will go through my strainer and jump, dump out there. This is just used as a general guideline, guys. This is how I do them all. I've never had an issue. Uh, I always get questions asking about if they should can attach the hoses again. You can. I always leave them disconnected. I find uh, your engine is all steel, right? So uh, you know how condensation builds up in something that is sealed. Like say you have a storage container that's a s steel building and this is getting stored for six months in the winter or more, seven months. And uh, if that can't breathe, it sweats. But if these hoses are off, uh, it won't sweat as much. It's still gonna sweat, trust me, but it's gonna let it breathe and dry out. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just leave them off. I think that's best. I have connected them for people where they are taking their boat away and they don't see me in the spring and they take it far up north or something and it's at their cabin hours away. So I'll drain it and reconnect it so they can go there in the spring put their muffs on it and start it, drain all the antifreeze out of the block that's left on land and then they can shove it in the lake and they can go. But uh, normally I leave everything disconnected. Anyways guys, if you like my uh, winterization videos on boats, check out my other ones. I have a bunch of them and uh, I'll have it in my marine winterization uh, playlist. Uh, if, I haven't, if I don't have one yet, I'll make one. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. As always guys, thanks for watching and please give the channel a like and a subscribe. If my videos interest you, please click on my channel and check out my other videos.